two killer phones. Let's do this. I asked in a previous video how I should shoot a comparison between OnePlus and LG, and the solution that seemed to make the most sense was doing two separate videos. This is part one. OnePlus is moving up the premium price ladder, while LG is looking to try and rein in costs. Someone looking at a powerhouse pocket computer and who might be interested in 5G today but is trying to avoid the top tier of $1,000 smartphones has two interesting options to look at. The standalone V60 starts at the same price as the upgraded OnePlus 8. That seems like a good place for me to kick off this comparison. Starting off with design, OnePlus wins. The OnePlus 7 and 7 Pro weren't broke, so OP didn't fix anything. The OnePlus 8 easily arrives as the more attractive device, and the curves help it feel a little smaller in the hand. LG is going for practical. Now, I prefer a flat front display, but that's going to add some chunk to the sides of a phone. And we see a minor step back on the V60 where the V60 has a camera bump again. If you saw both phones in rotating museum cases under beautiful lighting, I think most folks would lean towards the OnePlus. OnePlus also wins for display technology. Now, both of these phones have large 1080p screens and that resolution has been fine, even for some intense daily use. But you do have the fun perk on OnePlus cranking a faster refresh, and it does. It helps the phone feel snappier. As mentioned, I think a flat screen is more practical. I have fewer issues with accidental back swipes. Typing towards the edges is easier and you don't get that bend and reflection distortion, but the actual screen technology win goes to OnePlus. Staying on the front glass for another second, in-display fingerprint sensors are still lame. None of them perform as well as dedicated rear sensors. This is only the second in-display I've used from LG. It's a little quicker than the G8X, but it's still a pulse slower than the OnePlus's in my less than scientific study. Before moving on to performance, we have to give LG one special nod for build quality, including both IP68 and MilSpec 810G certifications, a very practical consideration for a gadget that needs to survive daily lifestyle abuse. I'm sure the OnePlus 8 is splash resistant to some degree, but we we don't know how splash resistant since OnePlus isn't paying for that certification. Now, performance. Internal technology is pretty evenly matched. There's very little that will slow down either phone. Having done quite a bit of performance testing on both, we're often neck and neck on the heaviest lifting situations. Even the most demanding power users on a budget will be well served by both phones as both represent decent upgrades over last year's premium devices. At this price, OnePlus takes a win for double the storage and 50% more RAM. For daily smartphone use, I'm still not sure more RAM has a huge impact, but double the internal storage, yeah, that helps. LG's been taking a bit of a beating so far, but we're into some categories where the V60 hits back harder. Camera tech is an easy win for an LG. A larger main camera sensor, better low light performance, better auto mode stills with a complete set of manual controls for stills and video, more fun modes for photos and videos, more natural HDR output, higher quality 4K with support for 8K video. The V60 is a monster in both cash. <laughs> <sighs> the OnePlus 8 is very good in most shooting situations, but any area where the OnePlus 8 scores well, I'm able to get something I like a bit better out of the V60. The V60 scores a similar win for audio, a hallmark LG differentiating feature, finally delivering on more competitive stereo speakers while managing to improve the headphone jack hardware. I made this joke in my V60 audio review, but it's totally true. I'm actually not confident that dogs would be able to hear these improvements, but LG continues to iterate, so I feel that's worth mentioning. Even down to the built-in recording software, there is no other phone manufacturer considering audio as comprehensively as LG does. I don't know. I mean, some folks love their ears and some folks... Battery life is another solid win for the LG. A larger capacity helps. The V60, especially as a standalone phone, is likely going to lead as one of the premium battery champs of 2020. Even in areas where OnePlus can pull a bit of a win, like recharge speed, the V60 is right behind it, and we get a convenience perk with wireless charging, which is lacking on the OnePlus 8. A quick word on software, both phones launched with a few rough edges, but OnePlus has iterated a lot faster on bug fixes. Fixes. Oxygen OS deserves a ton of praise for its quick, near-stock aesthetic. Now, software is more than just a launcher. 
LG is delivering support for some sophisticated features like the amp on the headphone jack auto sensing impedance, the stylus digitizer, the dual screen, the additional microphones, the amazing camera and audio recording apps, the better refined desktop mode. LG has more support for additional shortcuts and macros based on location or connected accessories. LG has more stuff and a lot of that stuff done significantly better than what OP can deliver, but I don't think it's controversial to give one plus the nod for expected long-term software support. Whew. Okay, so that's as good a place as any to wrap this up. LG V60 versus OnePlus 8, where does the premium phone shopper land? Out of the box, phone to phone, I think I have to give the edge to the OnePlus 8. The trickiest aspect of this conversation for LG is something that hasn't resonated with consumers much in the past. IMO, the biggest advantage for the V60 as a standalone phone is the raw potential. It starts with less storage for the same price, but it has a memory card reader. It has the less exciting screen, but for a hundred bucks, you can add a second display. It can become a note competitor by adding an active stylus. It has this amazing headphone jack, but now it doesn't include any bullets in the box to start using it right away. It has all this amazing potential, but it's very likely consumers won't know about any of it. How many folks do you know who never took advantage of things like removable batteries or upgradable storage. Outside of my mom using a Galaxy S5 for five years, that's almost everybody in my circle of family and friends. The OnePlus 8 doesn't have nearly as much room to grow, but out of the box, it's sleeker, it's snappier. It's gonna give off a better first impression, and we can be pretty confident it'll receive more attention from the manufacturer for software support. It's a tough fight with some strong back and forth, where I personally feel the V60 is the better computer and has wonderful perks for content creation and media consumption, I think the OnePlus 8 is the better phone and communicator gadget. All right, folks, let me hear it in the comments. Which phone takes the win? I'm sure you've got some thoughts. And stay tuned for part two of this video. What if we realized all of the potential of the V60 really maxed out what we could do with it. Well, that sounds like it would be a really good sparring match for the top tier OnePlus 8 Pro. It's gonna be brutal. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos. Sharing is critical these days and subscribing to the channel. More than just clicking compare on GSM Marina and declaring winners and losers by looking at a chart, we want to dig a little deeper. What can these phones really do? If you would like to help support the production of these deeper dive comparisons, there are some links down below and the support page over on somegadgetguide.com, but you might also consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. That's a growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me as I'm planning future videos and reviews and comparisons. They're super cool people, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but not really on the Facebooks. And I will catch you all on the next review.